Take two. <laughs> I've shut off the kiln that's at 20%. And uh, so now we're gonna open up the door and uh, we'll explain a little bit about how it's loaded, unloaded, and how the tarp works, airflow, and all that kind of good stuff. Okay, so what uh, I'm doing here is I'm hooking up the winch cable. It's got a hook on the end of it to uh, attach to a, a large eye bolt that I have on the inside of the, the door. And um, this is what we use to raise and lower the door. Okay, so we have the kiln is open and uh, <clears throat> we're going to disconnect the cable. And uh, now we're going to remove the uh, bags of kindling that we had in place. And you'll see towards the end of the video where we're putting, when we have the kiln reloaded, uh, we're going to load with more kindling again. It, there's a gap there by the door and the last bit of firewood. And the easiest way to fill that gap is with bags of kindling that we can dry ahead of time. You'll notice Gina went to the left there. Uh, she's bringing two bags of kindling to the truck for delivery today. And so now we're just carrying the remaining uh, bags of kindling off to the shipping container for storage for, for, future, for future use, for future sales. So here we're about ready to unload the kiln and you can see how the tarp is straight down, straight down, we try to get it, we use this stick here to keep the tarp from blowing, that way with the tarp held down like this, it forces the air to go through the stack rather than through up and over up and over through here. So you want the air to flow right through the whole stack. So that turned out pretty good. You can kind of see down at the end how the end of the, the tarp, it was sitting up on top. So it had a, maybe a little bit of a negative effect because it rolled back there. It should be more on top. It's hard to do with one hand. You get the idea. Okay, so now we're getting ready to uh, unpack the kiln. Gina's hauling out a, a long 19-foot board that we have, uh, we use to keep the tarp in place so it's not blowing around in the kiln. Um, and there I am, I'm rolling up the tarp and uh, get it up and out of the way so that we can start hauling out the firewood. Gina's gonna do a little sweeping, uh, make sure all the dust is out of the way so that uh, there's no bark or nothing that's gonna interfere with us rolling the carts out. So now we're gonna set up the tracking so that we can haul the carts out. A little board to bridge the gap. And then flat stock on this side. Short piece too. And so <clears throat> you could use angle iron on both on both tracks. 
We find it a lot easier just to use angle iron on one side. It'd be left or right, don't matter. Um, that way the V groove in the wheels on one side stays on the track and the other side of the cart uh, the wheels can just ride on the flat stock and you don't have to worry about those 90 degree um, angle irons being perfectly aligned because the carts will just follow along on one uh, on one side and the flat stock on the other side it just adapts according to if you know if your track is a little off kilter it won't matter all right so this is where the probe was placed in this sample underneath here so it's just a matter of pulling that out You can see by the time we'd been tagging this year, the wood that we split. So this was split in November 2nd. So now we're getting ready to uh, haul the first cart out. It has uh, two crates and uh, it's equivalent to one half a cord, 64 cubic feet of hardwood. It's a lot lighter coming out on the pole than uh, certainly when they go in. Uh, all that extra water really makes quite a difference in weight. So I'm heading over to the skid steer now and I gotta, the bucket is on it so I gotta run out back and uh, get the pallet forks. Okay, so we're uh, back with the skid steer. We got our pallet forks, and we're, we're going to get ready here to uh, to offload. And so we offload, and um, just making sure that the pallet forks are attached. We want uh, forks to fall off while I'm, I'm handling the, the crate of firewood. Getting the forks lined up. You can only go in so far because if you if you went in all the way with your pallet forks, of course you'd end up picking up the other crate as well, and you, and you don't want to do that. This just makes life too difficult. So <laughs> we do one crate at a time. And so now we got to get the straps ready to, so we can strap the crate uh, to the pallet forks so that we can dump next. So now we're ready to unload, uh, take off the first crate, then we've got to get it strapped onto the skid steer and then dump it into the truck. Um, I'm going to let this first unload run at uh, real time and um, to show you what's involved and then once we get into the uh, crates number two to <clears throat> number eight we'll uh, speed up through that process we'll show it all but uh, you can see all the, the steps that we take to, to do each one and um, then we'll be ready to uh, load the truck on board and uh, go out for delivery
So now we're ready for uh, loading the bin onto the truck. Uh, a truck is an international truck, <clears throat> CV515, and it's got a multi-lift hook lift system on it. The bin is 12 feet long, 4 feet high, and almost 8 feet wide. And as you can see, it's full. And that's from two full cords, two full measured cords are placed in there. The lifting capacity of this uh, particular hook lift system is 12,000 pounds. Uh, with the bin and the two cords, we're estimating probably 9,000, 9,500 pounds, because uh, each quart of kiln dried weighs about 3,700 pounds. So we'll get that on board. While I'm loading it on board, the truck is in neutral so that it's free to float either forward or backward, depending on uh, how the ground uh, resists the bin in being pulled up. So back up, now we're ready to go. All right, now we're ready to load the kiln. <clears throat> the wind noise uh, took out most of uh, our sound from our headsets, so I'm just going to do a voiceover here. Um, we're just talking about we're going to load a 12-inch crate here and a 16-inch crate over there. And uh, we're going to do four carts, four crates. Four carts, eight crates, sorry. Um make a total of two quarts and we use uh, these plastic tarps in between each cart to kind of fill in the, the gaps so that uh, there's less free flowing air between or around the crates we want the air to go through the wood not around the around the wood <clears throat> my solution for the door seal was these uh, foam pipe insulation um, covers it's kind of working. Um, find that uh, the foam deforms with the heat and the humidity. Um, basically, I took a piece of uh, steel flat stock and secured it all around the inside perimeter of the opening. And uh, there's a piece of white flash in there, which was vinyl siding that uh, I trimmed up and fit. And that was my first door seal, but it didn't last very long. So we got the steel in place, and then we put these foam pipe insulation things wrapped around. Uh, they did a pretty good job, but like I said, they, they deform easily. So I have to come up with another solution. Now we're heading out to the backyard and we're picking up a created 16 inch firewood. Again, this was a cut and split in uh, November, 2022. Right now it's March, 2023. <clears throat> We'll turn around and head back to the kiln. So <clears throat> Gene is pointing out here that um, the 12 inch crate that we previously loaded is a little bit crooked. So uh, she's asking me to put the 16 inch crate down and then to go and uh, readjust this, this one on a little bit. The cart that we put the, this crate on and moves the cart that moves the track. So when the 12 inch crate went on, it moved the track a little bit. Now, this is straight up and then straight back down. Now, so she's going to fix the cart, the track, <clears throat> make sure it's working. Because the last thing you want to do is for this cart to go off its track when yeah, when it's uh, <clears throat> being pushed inside. Yeah, that's yeah. happened before. Yeah. All right, we're back to business. Thank <laughs> you. 
first two crates loaded, 12 inch. There's a 32 cubic feet of 12 inch, and 32 cubic feet of 16 inch. You see there's lots of nice airflow. It'll blow under, the wind will blow under through the palace and up through here, up through here, and up through here. And because of the tarp that's going to be laying on top, all that would also be forced to blow through the stack as well. Now what Gene is doing here is screwing boards onto the, this end of the pallet so that uh, it blocks the airflow there, forcing the air to come through the wood. And I'll put another one here. And then once the crate gets rolled inside, she'll lay another one down on the bottom to, to block this gap here. So here we are loading the first crate of 12 inch and 16 inch into the kiln. You'd be surprised to learn that that's almost 2,000 pounds of weight uh, being pushed there. <clears throat> All right, so what we're setting up here is probe sample number one. And we just pick a, a decent sized stick uh, from the file. And the 16s have been drying for a couple of months outdoors since November. Um, the 12 inch were only done about maybe three or four weeks ago with green wood. So this is going to be a higher, much higher con uh, moisture content than uh, the 16 inch. So I'm just going to put uh, a probe in this 16. And I'm going to do a probe number two will be on 12 inch. And then number three will be on 16. And number four probe will be on the 12 inch. So I'll get... I'm not concerned that this is going to, the 16 inch is going to dry pretty quick, but uh, it's going to get balanced out with the 12 inch taking longer to dry. So, anyway, so you drill a hole long enough to fit the probe leads in, which is about probably three quarters of an inch. And I got a little jig here. The probe said to be 30 millimeters apart or three centimeters, which is about probably, an, I don't know, an inch and a quarter, something like that. So you got one hole here, put a block, and then go right over in the same in the same grain line, and then drill another hole. And I take my probe leads. I check them, make sure that they're not cracked. If they were cracked, it's just a matter of taking off these two set screws cut the wire, make a fresh lead, poke it back in, put the two set screws back on, and you've got a, a fresh probe reading again. So one goes in there. It doesn't matter, the blue one can go in first, and then the green, and then the brown one, it doesn't matter. All right. So, Shoving it back in, you got to be careful. You don't want to jam it in there because you don't want to break off your wire. So, get that sitting good. So that one's ready. As you can see, the, the tarp's going to roll underneath these two lead wires. You come down, it's going to sit right here. Ideally, that's where I want it to sit because then that blocks, if the roll is here, the forced air has no choice but to go through the stack. I don't want it going through here because that's just free flow air. It's not really doing any benefit. You want the air to go through the wood, not on top of the wood. So, all right. Thanks. So we're loaded now fully, and we're just going to position the tarp. Get it rolled out. The idea here is to have the uh, tarp come straight down, drop straight down, and so we use a, a long stick 
to keep that in place, and then we roll out the tarp. This particular stick's been used quite a bit. It's starting to go crooked, it's quite dry. And so what I'm talking about here is I want to line it up so that that board is resting on top of those boards that I'm tapping there. Because uh, I like to have the, the, the chart go straight down. Doesn't always work, but uh, that's that's the ideal position that I like to have the tarp. So I'm just maneuvering the board here, and look at that, the board breaks. So we got to stop now and uh, make a new board. <laughs> show high quite high so 58 is probe number one 58 percent moisture content breeding out of the sample of maple 16 yeah it's a 16 inch so that was uh maple 42 percent is probe number two that was a 12 inch birch 47 probe number three that was also uh, a maple 16 inch 45% moisture was the last probe for 12 inch, and that was birch. I think it was birch. It might be, it might have been available. So, yeah. Yeah, so to summarize, that's what it takes to unload the kiln and reload the kiln. And it takes, well, an hour to unload, get squared away, and then uh, another hour for sure to reload. And we charge an extra hundred dollars for kiln dried, and I'll be brutally honest and say that you don't make money on no money on it because it costs a hundred dollars a cord, almost a hundred dollars a cord to reduce the electricity, and you're not even factoring in your time yet. So, but. It is. What it comes down to is just a value-added service that we provide for people who uh, are stuck, don't have any uh, dry wood for the winter. That's what we do. 